In a career spanning of almost 30 years, Joey Dunlop rode some of the most iconic motorcycles we've ever seen. Ranging from superbikes, 250s, 125s, 750s and 500ccs. In the anniversary week of 20 years since Joey's passed away, I thought it was only right to try some of his most iconic bikes on Ride 3. So I hope you enjoy this video guys. Make sure to like, subscribe and let's get into the video. So as you can see guys, the first bike we have on screen is the RC30. Now this bike was released in 1987. So it is, let me just count, it is 33 years old. So Joey was famed for winning the most superbike races on this machine. It's arguably the most successful machine he's ever rode. So we're going to go back to the Ulster Grand Prix. We're going to give it a test and see how it goes. From the bike's release, I believe over a seven year period, Joey won quite a lot of races on this bike, and especially at the big road races. So, as you can see, we're at the Ulster Grand Prix today, so let's start. As you can see, the livery we've got is a Joey themed livery. It's from 1988, I believe. So, we we'll start our lap, we'll come around the final corner. And what sticks out to me, I know it's a game and you don't get much feeling, but the bike sounds amazing. Even the onboard camera, as we can see here, it is a lot different than bikes we get now. Very basic on the dash, it's very, very simple. So immediately when when have braking on this thing, the rear end is very twitchy. And with bikes in the past, you had a lot of. You know, it was a lot of rear end feel basically the front end wasn't really there as we have opposed to today's bikes but Joey was a king on this machine some of the races that he had around the Ulster Grand Prix especially in 1994 with Philip McCallan you know, they're historic and people still talk about them today because they have so much fond memories of them and I wasn't around then but when you, you hear people talking about races in the past that that personally I've never actually seen I've only ever heard or seen pictures or seen little videos from it, it it's a feel good factor and I thought this video would be be good to bring back some memories for, for people watching you know some of the iconic machines that we have especially the RC30 is a iconic machine for for many reasons you know it was the bike that really stamped Honda's authority on the world scene and as you can see, I've got it on the screen here, Joey Dunlop won four races around the Ulster Grand Prix, four around the Northwest, and four around the Isle of Man TT on this bike. So in total, 12 wins on a bike that spans seven years is, is quite phenomenal. So it's not the bike I think of when I, I think of Joey, but I know for a lot of people it is the, the iconic bike. It's it's very strange when I'm racing on ride and stuff when I'm, I'm playing. I don't really tend to go back to the old bikes as much as I should. They're in the game and they maybe don't get used as much. But when you put a, a number three and you have the Honda livery, you, you do feel quite quite special. And you can kind of pretend to be Joey and you can picture him racing around the Ulster Grand Prix or the TT or, or the Northwest on this thing and. It still proves a, a favourite today with people I've seen on Fireblades, like modern Fireblades, I've seen people have this livery on their machine, you know, so it's it's really iconic and I even think back in 2011 or 2012 the the uh, Honda racing team for the TT, so John McGuinness's team actually basically based the livery off the old Honda, Honda Britain livery, so we're coming near the end of our lap here now and it's quite enjoyable. It's, like I say, different, but you get a real sense of what, what, what it must have been like to ride a bike with this much power around the road, like the Ulster Grand Prix or the TT. It, 
it, it was a class above the rest of the Honda and you can understand with, with the talent that Joey has so how he's able to get so much results and so much success on this machine so we come up to the line now and it's I don't know where it is on the leaderboard I think it's like a 325 I do 324 so I don't know where that would put us in the world but who cares so the next machine that we have is one that probably I think of Joey of the most it is is NSR 250 so this is the 1995 model so we have put the Honda Britain livery on it for for this this lap and immediately when you see the red the number three the the green background on the 250s you know who it is and this is the bike that I think of and my first memory of Joey I really have is when he won around the TT in 2000 or sorry in 1998 in the torrential rain uh, it is the the bike I think of the race was stopped after two laps so it was torrential rain originally a four lap race and what makes it even more special this is that Joey previously to, to the come to the TT 98 had Christ quite badly at the Tandra Gee and had lost his ring finger he had battered his his wrist had other injuries as well and to see what he'd done that day on the, the 250 especially in the, the conditions that it was he almost said it was a blessing basically because he couldn't have gone the full distance in the in the dry and when the the heavens basically opened he knew to take his chance and and that kind of sums up Joey, you know, he, he could set a bike up or he, he knew the conditions and the, the circuit far better than everyone else. It gave him that edge that he knew what he needed to do before he even went out. And it sets him apart from the rest of the talent that we had. But the, the 250, in today's terms, we, we don't have them. You know, we get the classic races at the, the TT and... We get the odd maybe maybe national road race or even sometimes the Ulster Grand Prix. I know up until two thousand and eighteen had had ran them. And it's 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 nice to see the bikes out again, you know, because growing up going to road races and stuff, you, you look out for the, the two strokes, the one two fives, the, the two fifties and the the smell, the noise, that, that that's my first kind of memory of, of going to a road race because they were kind of my favourite bikes at the time. But with machines like this iconic Honda Britain that we see, Joey had won five TTs in the, the 90s on this this machine. And it was four four out of four to five uh, years he had won the the TT 250 race in a row and he kinda of gets touted as the maybe the greatest 250cc rider roads I've ever seen certainly he's in the category for me that he is the greatest for, for that but it's a diversity that Joey is able to jump from a 125, a 250 and then jump onto a super sport or a, a super bike and just have the same results you know people often talk about you know MotoGP riders or World Super Bike riders they're, they're famed for their talents yes on one bike I know they can't move about much, but to put the contact into it, you're jumping from different machines, different speeds, you're adapting to the circuits. To be consistently good for for over 30 years, as Joey was, on different machines and different classes, is, is it'll never be done again. And riding this thing is it's just it's just nice. It, it, it's a nice throwback to what what used to be, and I know we're in modern times now, but it's good to hear a two-stroke riding around a circuit. We we'll come across the line, folks. It is a 332, and let's get on to our next machine. It is the best in this video. So, as you can see, it is the VTR 1000 SP1, the bike that Joey rode in 2000. This is the Vimto Demon livery. So, this is the one he was teammates with, John McGuinness. And if you didn't know, in 2000, Joey was the, and still is, the oldest pole sitter ever in the superbike class around the Northwest. He 
was pole position at the age of 48, so a little stat that he had. And this bike, and this livery doesn't really get talked about as much because because Joey actually raced a different livery at the TT in the Formula One race when he he won in 2000, of course. But this was actually the livery that he ran in the Senior TT that year. Joey ran, of course, in the Formula One race the the all red, the iconic livery that John McGuinness paid tribute to in 2013. But immediately for for this bike here, um, just put some some video on, on the screen for you. It shows you Joey at the Northwest. It, it's a lovely looking machine. It's um It was a revolutionary bike from Honda basically. It was basically the the rival the sort of machines that you can't even put out in World Superbike. So it was their answer to that. And from what I've heard and what I've read it is a handful to ride and, and Joey and John McGuinness necessarily didn't didn't really gel with this bike a lot but again the experience of Joey of knowing what he needed to do and the stories of him getting an orange slide engine from World Superbikes and for the TT and, and the Japanese kind of going Who, who's riding this this little wee grey haired fella from, from Northern Ireland and this kind of put Joey in the position where he's like okay I'll show you what you've came to see and, and of course he wins the most iconic race of all time around the TT but the story here that at the Northwest that Joey actually was caught by the police because he needed to do some testing on the Friday he was riding up and down around his house and the police caught him doing 160 mile an hour and, and they'd say I think it was the, the Sam Graham it was a mechanic at the time they were like we couldn't catch Joey just, just wish him all the best for tomorrow and this kind of shows you the what he could get away with the, the respect we saw it was Joey doing it so it must be okay so couldn't do it now obviously but it just shows you how much people loved him and it's a it's a really nice bike to ride as you can see there's the famous TT livery bike there um, just think that McGuinness said that he, he doesn't know how Joey went so quick on this thing. It was it was a handful to ride. It was very very sort of it would change lap by lap. It would be fine one place and you go in the next lap and you see same place. It'd be all over the place. It, it didn't really have consistency. But again, co coming back to it, Joey's experience was was amazing. That getting the most out of the bike, using his his knowledge of the track and basically just taking it to where he was racing and throughout this week we'll, we'll, we'll take more of a look at the, the famous race in 2000 um, against David Jeffries around the TT because when I grew, grew up it was the, the video that I, I watched the most, it was the one that after dinner time you would stick on and a pet of a mum and dad, let me watch it one more time and I'm sure they were fed up with me watching but yeah it, it's just great memories with Joey I, I was only three when when he passed away and even though that I was young and my first rec recognition of you knowing memory of motorbikes is, is seeing Joey of the yellow helmet and I was I was lucky enough to, to meet Joey um, the year before he died, I was only two, so and there's a nice photo that I'm saving for another video that I'll show you is of me and Joey and my dad, and it's just nice to pay tribute to him in some way. You know, you know we're on a game. It's it's the only way that I can do it at the minute, and it, it's it's just a fitting way to maybe give a run out to the old bikes, you know. So. We're near the end of our lap here, folks. Come out of the chicane. This bike sounds amazing. The uh, the, the style for Honda to actually go down this route was very different compared to what they had done. But like I say, it was a bike that challenged Ducati and World Superbike, and ultimately Joey won on that too. So there you go. Three bikes, three laps done around the Ulster Grand Prix in the Northwest. I hope you've enjoyed this, folks. Make sure to subscribe like the video and we will catch you next time